Hey guys, so today I thought I would come at you with a review of my Louis Vuitton bandolier handbag. Now the reason that I wanted to do this review specifically today was because I literally unboxed this bag one year ago to this day. And so I wanted to show you kind of like what it looks like after a year of use. I've literally used this bag every single day. Like I probably used it 360 days out of this year, if you know what I mean. It has been my everyday bag. I don't change it up. It goes with me through rain, through hail, through sunshine, in hot days, cold days. It's been everywhere. And so I kind of wanted to give you a bit of a year wear and tear and my personal review. So first off, this is my baby. I got this bag, as I said, one year ago. Um, today is the 19th of November, which is also my 21st birthday. But I wanted to um, obviously film this because this is the day that I unboxed it. So as you can see, my patina is really quite caramelized. Um, most people don't use their bag, I think, as much as I do or use the same bag straight. Um, so I'll show you what the patina originally looked like. So I don't know if you can see, but that is the um, Vachetta or Vachetta. Personally, I say Vachetta. People get the knickers in a knot. You know what I'm saying? Get over it. Um, but that is what the Vachetta looks like when you get the bag. And as you can see, there is a pretty big difference. Let's see if I can show you better. I don't know if you can see that very well, but that's like white and this is like really, really caramel. So that just shows how much I have used this bag. Now, even though I know everyone and their dog first off has this bag and everyone and their dog has probably reviewed this bag, I still wanted to do my personal review and thoughts, etc. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but I do have obviously the monogram print. For me, I wanted to go the monogram um, because to me that's iconic and that's why I picked the monogram, even though I know the, the Abin was the first print that was um, released on the handbags. I just find that Louis Vuitton, the LV, it's iconic. People say it's in your face. It's like, look at my handbag, but it's just personally my preference. The size of this bag that I got was a 30. Now, if you don't know what that means, it is 30 centimeters across the bottom. So it pretty much goes up in centimeters. You can get the 25, 30, 35, and 40. And when you hit 45, you're then in luggage. I would not get any bigger than a 30. Now, when I got this bag, I actually have a photo that I'll insert now. So that is me comparing the 30 to the 35. As you can see, the 35 is massive and I'm six foot two, so I'm 188 centimeters tall. I'm quite tall and I didn't feel like I could pull off a 35. I felt like it was too big. Um, and I must admit all the reviews that I have seen with the 35, most people regret it. I'm not gonna say all, but I've, I've heard a lot of regrets when it comes to getting um, the 35. So if you're thinking of getting a Louis Vuitton bag, possibly think of the 30. It's a really, really great size. And when people say it's a bottomless pit, they, they literally mean it. It might not look like it can hold a ton. Seriously, this holds a full size makeup bag, full size wallet, a sunglass case, glasses case, um, and all this other random shit that I carry around with me. And it's still got space. That is why I chose this bag is because literally you can fit so much shit in it. Now I'm going to chat about the bandolier. Um, obviously the bandolier is a remake of the speedy. So usually back in the day, you could only get the box bag and it just had these two simple straps. Um, so you could only carry it really in the hook of your arm or in your hand like this. To me, that is not versatile at all. I'm someone who likes to throw my bag over my shoulder. And when I first started looking at Louis Vuitton, they actually didn't have the bandolier. And I was kind of like, eh, I don't like the Neverfull and I really don't like the speedy. When they bought out the bandolier, I was like over the moon. Pretty much what the bandolier is, is these two straps. Well, it's actually three straps. So there's a connection here and then there's a connection here and a connection here. So if I want, I can take out that center connection so that the strap will be about that long. Personally, I think that looks really awkward. So I have the um, long strap like that. So it sits at my hip and then it's got the two straps down each side. It's a love or hate bag. Like some people can't stand the bandolier and they stick with their speedy. That's totally cool. Some people are all about the um, speedy bandolier and they don't like the original. Once again, totally cool. We all are entitled to our opinion. But personally for me, I would have regretted my purchase pretty much instantaneously if I had got the speedy because I barely ever use the top straps, ever. It's just like, 
It's an annoyance to me. I don't want to have to use the top straps. I use the top straps if I'm desperate. And when I do, I usually hook the strap like that. So it does stay there when you walk. But yeah, I usually hook it like that so it's not all around the place. And that is also how I put it when I place my bag on the ground or wherever. Now you're not gonna be able to see it very well because I am obviously sitting on the ground, but I will show you where the bag hits me. I have it on both the longest attachments and that's kind of where it hits me. It's, as I said, it's really, really tough. But this right here, that's my hip bone. So as you can see, it hits me in a really, really good spot and it just looks really, really casual as I'm shopping. Let's go into the wear and tear of this bag because you know, that's why I'm doing it. On a year. Um, first off, let's just point out the fact my bag is covered in stains and that is obviously no doing of Louis Vuitton. That is all my doing. I don't know if you can see it's got like black marks and it's got watermarks and yeah it's literally been through hell but it's a bag. I'm not going to let it sit in its box. I'm gonna actually use it and so yes it is covered in stains and my twilly is coming off. Um, as you can see, I have decorated my bag with a twilly, which I will take off right now so you can see it without. Personally, I just got this twilly off eBay. It was like $7.99. I was gonna buy a Louis Vuitton twilly and then I'm like, why the hell would I do that? They are so cheap online. And then I also have a luggage tag. This has got my initials hot stamped. I'll do a quick little review of the hot stamping. Um, hot stamping is obviously free with some purchases like you can't get all bags hot stamped, but the ones that you can, it's like usually in a specific area. For example, if I was to get um, my bag hot stamped, it has to be in the top right. I didn't really want to, so I got the luggage tag instead, and I have had no issues with my hot stamping. I saw recently a girl talking about the fact the foil started peeling out. I haven't had any issue with mine whatsoever. This was done at the Brisbane Queen Street store. Um, yeah, and I honestly, it looks like I just got it and I have had that done for seven months now. So back to the wear and tear. There is one thing on this bag that pisses me off beyond all. And I'm gonna share it with you and um, see if any other Louis Vuitton lovers have experienced this because, oh my God, it shits me off. Okay, so let's go into the zip and I'll show you and then you'll realize what I'm talking about. So this is my zip. As you can see, it is a beautiful gold, a quite a nice brushed gold, some would say. Very, very silver toned, you know, pretty. It's a pretty little gold. Let's go onto my D-ring on the side. So let me unclip the strap. Here we go, here's the D-ring. So as you can see, they match pretty well perfectly. The D-ring is also really, really like a faint gold, like, I don't know, like a, the only way I can explain it is like brushed gold. It's it's like a really, really silver tone gold. And then we'll get my strap metal, shall we? This is my strap metal. That is the brushed gold. I do not know if you can see, but there is such a huge difference. This is like a really, really dark, dark, really incredibly shiny gold, like super, super shiny. And then this, is a really, really dull freaking gold. That annoys me, but there's more. This is my lock. <laughs> my lock has faded to the shit house, and I have heard so many complaints about the locks fading, and they're so legit. Like, look at the difference between my lock and then my strap hook. This is like faded. That shines, that does not. It is really, really faded. The bottom is even faded. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of disappointing, I will admit. When you spend $1,600 on a bag, you kind of expect really, really good quality. And I'm not saying that it's bad quality, the zipper works amazingly and everything like that, but oh my God, it drives me nuts so because the metals are all different. Now, I will link my vlog down below of when I bought this bag. I'll also link um, the unboxing down below. This bag is authentic. I bought it from the store. So yes, it is authentic. It's not because it's fake, but I feel like it makes it look like it's fake. I don't know if that makes sense. It just like, just looks like they've just jumbled a whole bunch of metals together. And I just don't really understand why because you know, once again, we've got the brushed gold um, here, but then if you go inside of the bag, we're back to dark gold again. 
on the inside D-ring. So it's kind of like, maybe they like ran out of gold shit and started stealing, stealing stuff off like other, other bags. I have no idea. I've actually only seen people talk about it on the Damier Abin having issues with the color matching. That's me personally. I haven't seen anyone talking about the um, monogram print having issues, but yeah, it's not like it's crazy noticeable. When my bag's over here and I'm walking along with it, <laughs> walking along with it, um, you can't see it, but it's just something that kind of bugs me. I don't know if you'll be able to see the difference in the metals. It's really, really tough to show, but completely flipping different. Now the inside of the bag is just one big hole. Um, I think everyone always discusses how it's one big hole and it comes with one um, pocket on one side and then on the other side there's just a D-ring. So there really isn't much storage but what I did is I went onto eBay, I typed in bag organizer, you can import a bag organizer, it cost me $2.34. It's kind of like a flimsy one because I didn't want the hard structured one because I do like my bag to look like really like I don't know floppy and just I don't know used I guess that's a look that I like um but you know each to their own I've seen some people with the structured bag but personally when I carry it on my hip I like it to like mold to me and rather than just like looking like this box shape the canvas is in amazing condition. After a year's use, you'd think maybe there'd be some like wear and tear or something. Well, you'd bloody hope not, seeing as though it was $1,600. But yeah, honestly, my canvas looks like it did when I first bought it. It kind of even smells like when I first bought it. Is that strange that I'm smelling my handbag? But anyone who has a Louis Vuitton knows the smell when you open up the box. It's like kind of like... I don't know what you'd explain the smell as, but it's just really like strong, I guess. I don't know. My bag still faintly smells like that. So anyway, I'm not going to keep rambling on about this bag. Um, it's a great bag. It is a great first purchase. I now have two other Louis Vuitton bags and I must admit Louis Vuitton is just to me a really, really good brand. I really like their bags. I really like their customer service. I've actually never had a bad experience in um, Louis Vuitton. Chanel on the other hand, that's an interesting one, but we won't go into that. I've always had really, really great experiences whenever I go to the Brisbane Queen Street store. And um, yeah, they always package your stuff up really, really nicely and they're really chatty and lovely. But I would definitely recommend a bandolier for your first bag. One question I'm often asked is what's better, the bandolier or the Neverfull? First off, I can't comment. I don't have a Neverfull. Um, I only have the bandolier, but personally, I tried on the Neverfull when I went to the store and I can't stand it. Um, it just doesn't suit me at all. I'm not a Neverfull kind of girl. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but I feel like bags suit different people and the Neverfull, Neverfull, mm, okay. Neverfull just didn't look good on me. It just looked really awkward and like I was carrying somebody else's bag um, but as soon as I chucked the bandolier on I just felt like it was my bag instantaneously as I said my patina is dark like really darkened I would never use anything to make my patina go darker that is one thing that I want to put in there I know that some people say if you use baby wipes and stuff it'll make your patina darken quicker and I was actually thinking of doing that because I don't like the white vachetta when it first comes out like it just I don't know, I just really don't like it. Like when I first got my Louis Vuitton, I hated it because, well, I didn't hate it. No, that's not the case at all. But like, I just didn't like that the Vachetta was so white. Um, but honestly, with use, your Vachetta will get darker. I personally wouldn't risk putting anything on my bag um, to speed up the process. The process is part of the fun, you know what I mean? Like, what's the point in getting to the destination straight away? Like. You should like weave along the track to get there. You know what I mean? But I'm really, really glad I didn't do anything to my machete up because, um, well, yeah, it looks pretty cute now, but it will get darker obviously. And I cannot wait for that. Anyway, that is my review on my speedy bandolier and my one year update. I have no idea when I'm going to get a chance to upload this video. So sorry if it's like early December, um, because this actually was filmed in November, but yeah, November and December, I think are really busy months for everyone. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will chat with you guys later. See ya.